Welcome to part 2 of the Atavism X Combat Tutorial Series. In this video, we're going to be going over the Abilities plugin, but if you're new to Atavism, I recommend you follow along the entire series because of the way that all of the combat plugins work together in Atavism. Let's get started. Abilities in Atavism cover everything from a monster's auto attacks, to using a potion, to casting a fireball, a heal, or an AoE spell. An ability is what will appear on your character's hotkey bar for them to use. The ability plugin will allow you to customize the conditions in which the ability can be used, and how it is used. Once those conditions are met and the player uses the ability, the ability will apply an effect to the target and play a coordinated effect. For example, if we wanted to create a fireball ability, we would use the plugin to set the casting time, the mana cost, the range of the fireball, as well as the projectile speed of the fireball. Then, if our player uses the fireball ability and hits a target, it will call on an effect we create in the effect plugin, which will decide what it will do, such as apply a burn DOT or do damage. The ability will also call on a coordinated effect to determine what the fireball spell is going to look like, what animation our character plays, and what sound effect it makes. The ability plugin and effect plugin together are extremely versatile, but as a result, they have a lot of parameters to go over, so it's important to understand what every field is doing in this plugin. We'll be continuing with our unarmed skill, so in this video we want to make our unarmed auto attack ability to punch our enemies, but we'll go over various more complex examples of abilities that are possible towards the end of this tutorial series. Let's get started. Start by opening up your Atavism X editor and selecting your profile, then click on the combat tab on the left side and select the abilities plugin. Just as with skills, there are a number of demo abilities already available on the demo version of Atavism that you can use as a reference point, but we're going to be creating our ability from scratch, so start by pressing the plus icon in the bottom right corner of the editor. For the name of our ability, we'll select Unarmed Strike. There are cases where the name of the ability does not matter, such as an item use effect or a monster's auto attack. But if it's an ability that you want to give to the players, try to name it appropriately. Next to that is the icon field, which is what will appear on your player's skill window and what they will drag onto their hotkey bars. If your editor is properly linked to your Unity project, all the icons in your project should appear in the file browser here. If they are not showing up, be sure to press the synchronize button in the top right. Because we can change these icons whenever we want, it's fine to pick something temporary using any of the free icons that come with Atavism or by grabbing something off the asset store. We will just go with the gloves for this one. Next is the ability type. This will determine whether or not some parameters appear in the rest of the plugin and how it will function. From this list we can choose combat melee ability, this is used for physical damage based attacks. Then magic attack ability is used for magic or spell based attacks. There's Effect Ability, this is for things like stuns, sleeps, slows, basically abilities that do stuff without really dealing any damage. And then lastly is Friendly Effect Ability. This is primarily used for healing and buffing friendly targets. Now it's important to note that abilities of this type will never miss. A skill book that teaches a skill would use this type, so would a potion or a shield or healing spell. It can also be set to passive, so for example, if when we reach level 10 in our unarmed strength skill that we're working on right now, we can make it so that the player gains this new passive ability that will increase the player's carrying weight permanently. In the case of our unarmed strike ability, we know it's going to be a physical based attack, so we'll select combat melee ability. Next is the skill parameter. This will tie the ability to that skill and determine where the next field goes to, experience. If we set our experience to 1 and our skill to unarmed strength, and we set in the last video the game setting ability skill up chance to 100%, it means that 100% of the time that we use this ability is going to grant 1 experience to our skill. That's exactly what we want in our case. With or without a skill profile, 
you should always remember to assign a skill here unless your game is using a system where skill points are purchased instead of trained. Next up is the channeling and casting parameters. There are three ways to execute an ability in Atavism. It can be an instant, it can have a casting time before it takes effect, or it can be channeled, in which it does things as long as the spell is being used over time. Let's say we want to create a spell like Arcane Missiles from World of Warcraft where it shoots three missiles a second while it is channeled. To do that, we would select the channeling box, and then next we could decide if the player can move while they're channeling it or not, and we'd leave this unchecked. And then the next field, channeling pulse time, will decide the time between each pulse. So we'd set this to one for one second, and then we want it to hit three times, so we would set this to three. Now this ability will channel for three seconds, one second for each pulse, and it will call on the effect we choose three times. We could also go the route of something like Black Desert Online, where our abilities hit our targets multiple times in a second rather than once. For example, if we want our punch ability to actually call on an effect a bunch of times super fast, we'd set it to channeling in a run and set the time between the pulses to 0.01 and then tell it to pulse 8 times. This would make the ability call on our chosen damage effect 8 times in less than a tenth of a second. Similarly, we could uncheck channeling and put a casting time to make this into a casted spell. This will add a delay to when the ability fires off its effect. We could decide that the player can move while casting, and we can also decide if a cast or channel can be interrupted and the chance of it being interrupted. However, the chance placed here for the spell to get interrupted is multiplied by whatever effect is trying to interrupt it. For example, if we set an ability to have a 50% chance to get interrupted, and we use an interrupt skill with an effect that has a 50% chance to interrupt it, then it will have a 25% chance to get interrupted. I recommend if you plan to use interrupts in your games to just set this number to 100% always, and then you can determine the chance on specific abilities and effects that are meant to interrupt it without having to worry about all of your abilities having different chances to get interrupted based on how the two numbers are interacting. Now the box skip part of checking allows the ability to ignore if the player meets certain requirements for the ability to get casted, such as reagent costs or having the ability learned, and stealth reduce will let this ability reduce the stealth level of their target. For now, our unarmed strike ability is just a simple basic attack, so we can leave all of this blank. One thing to note is that casting and channeling are not mutually exclusive. You could technically have an ability that has a 5 second cast time, after which it could transition into a 5 second channel time. Abilities also don't need to be channeled in order to pulse multiple times like multi-hitting attacks. You can set the pulses without enabling the channel checkbox. The is toggle checkbox is used to set if this ability can be turned on and off. This would be used for something like a defensive stance or a sprint, but we will leave that unchecked for this ability as well. Now we move on to the activation requirement subsection. Activation requirements are checked and called on the moment an ability is used. The cost type will call on any vitality stat in your game. By default, the demo version of Atavism has health, mana, stamina, and weight. Typically, you would use mana as a cost, but this field can't be left blank, so we will set it to health and leave the cost fields at zero. You can decide if the cost of a spell or ability is a flat cost or a percentage of that player's vitality stat. So if I put 5 here, it would cost 5 health to use this ability, but if I put 5 here, it would cost 5% of their health to use the ability, and you can put these together to make it 5 plus 5%. Next is the caster and target effects. This will determine if an effect must be on either the person using the ability or the person being targeted by the ability in order to use this ability. For example, if we want to make an ability that we can use to remove a poison debuff and make us immune to poison for 5 seconds, but it's only usable when we're poisoned, we can set this to our poison effect and then select the is consumed checkbox so that the next time the poison effect is on our player, we can use the ability and it will consume that poison. Or if you're using combo skills like a freezing spell that can only be used on a target if they have a wet debuff and it consumes the wet debuff and freezes them for 5 seconds. After that, we have fields that cover reagents, items that are required in the player's inventory in order to use the ability. You will typically set this on consumable items to be the item being used. For example, if this ability is being used as a potion's healing effect, you would set the requirement to a healing potion, and then the healing potion would get consumed in the process whenever the person clicks on the item in their inventory. 
These fields do not count for ammo though, such as bullets or arrows. We will define that in the ammo used field below, deciding how much ammo is used there instead. The type of ammo that is used is determined by the weapon field. When the weapon is created and assigned an ammo type in the items plugin, the checkbox next to that will determine if the reagent is used immediately or after the casting or channeling is completed. As we are making an unarmed strike skill, we don't need any of this so we can leave all of it blank. If you want an ability to be only usable with a certain weapon type, set this here. We only want to be able to punch people with our character when we are unarmed, so we will select that for this field. You can add more weapon types to this list, as well as add more ammo types by going into the server tab on the left and opening up the options choices plugin. The target type is pretty straightforward. This will indicate what this ability can be used on. If you are doing an action based game or creating an AOE skill, you will be utilizing the AOE target types, which will add quite a few more parameters to the ability plugin. Because creating an AOE ability is a bit of a different beast than a targeted one, we will go into more detail when we create our own AOE ability later on in this tutorial series. For now, we will just set this to enemy for our unarmed strike ability. Then the target state, dead or alive, 99% of the time you're going to set this to alive except for resurrection spells or raised skeleton spells which are only targetable on dead characters. After that we have the target species. Atavism by default has a few example species which you can assign to mobs using the mob plugin. You can create or remove species again in the option choices plugin. Use this if say you have a spell called hibernate that only works on beasts or banish demons that only works on demons, stuff like that. We will leave it blank for our unarmed strike skill. The next 5 parameters though are pretty important. Whenever you are creating any type of ability, make sure you pay attention to these, as if you fill these ones out wrong, they can cause you a lot of headaches. Min and max range are straightforward, but you should generally set a precedent for what range you consider to be melee range in your game in your player's auto attack abilities. Anything between 1 and 4 is usually acceptable. I prefer the range of 1, but you'll want to make sure your mobs respect this range as well. Typically though, I recommend that you make sure your mobs have at least one point higher max range than the players to avoid any issues where the players can attack mobs without being attacked themselves. Minimum range is something you might use for ranged attacks or something like a charge ability that can only be used on targets that are at least 5 meters away. Next is the speed. This is generally the bane of new Atavism users existence because you might think to ignore it for melee abilities. It doesn't matter how fast your weapon's traveling if they're right in front of you. The speed controls the rate at which the ability travels towards the target. If your minimum attack range is 1, your attack still needs to travel that 1 meter. So if you accidentally leave the speed at the default 0.01, your melee swings are going to be super delayed. Make sure that on melee attacks you set this to 1000 as this is the max speed and makes it instant. For ranged attacks, general projectile speeds of arrows is around 30 for reference when you're deciding how fast you want spells like frostbolts and firewalls to travel to their targets. The next two checkboxes though, also pretty self-explanatory, aside from AoE spells you will be checking the requires a target box for pretty much every skill unless you are trying to make an action combat oriented MMORPG. Requiring facing a target just means that the player needs to face their character at the target at the time of using the ability. Then we have the pulse requirements. These fields are identical to the activation requirement fields. The only difference is that these requirements will be taken into account with each pulse of the ability. If the ability is a channeling type. We can leave all of this blank but the editor still requires something in the cost type field so we will just put in health and leave the rest empty. And below that is the cooldown attributes. Firstly the global cooldown will trigger a cooldown for all of your skills for the duration of the global cooldown. This is a mini player wide cooldown that prevents the player from spamming abilities. By default it is set to 1 but you can change this at any time in the game settings plugin under the server tab on the left side. A weapon cooldown is similar to the global cooldown but is internally 3 seconds and only affects other abilities using the weapon cooldown. You can also change this number in the game settings plugin. 
The next field, cooldown type, allows you to create a category cooldown that you can potentially use to link multiple types of abilities or items together. For example, if all of your potions in the game have a potion cooldown type and you set this to 15 for all of them, then whenever you use a potion, it will put all of your potions on cooldown for that same 15 seconds. In our case, we want to create an auto attack ability so it does not require a cooldown as we'll be calling it from the auto attacks based on the character's attack speed. But unless you want your players to be able to spam something, you should always make sure to add a cooldown in some form. You can also decide if the cooldown will start the moment the ability is used. If you don't check this box, then the cooldown will start when casting or channeling completes instead. Once you've sorted out your cooldowns though, we'll have the effect area. This ability will call on the effects you select here from the effect plugin to apply to our target once the ability is used successfully. And we can choose whether the effect will apply to the caster, the person using the ability, or the target of the ability. You can add an effect you created or hit the plus button here to create a brand new effect. But because of the complexity of the effects plugin, we will be covering that in the next video, part three of this tutorial. Similarly, below the effects is the coordinated effects. This section is used to call on the coordinated effects plugin to decide what our ability will look like, what animations and sounds and effects will play when we use it. And we can decide if they play on activate while channeling as well as special animations and particles for when a spell is interrupted or fails. For now, we will be leaving all of these fields blank until we create the effects and coordinated effects we want to later on in this tutorial. The only thing left for the ability plugin is the description of the ability, which will appear anytime the player mouses over the ability in their user interface. We're making an unarmed ability, so we'll just say this ability punches an enemy with your fists, and then make sure to hit the save button so we don't lose data. And the last parameter here is the ability tags, which is used by the event trigger plugin, but we don't need to be worrying about that just yet, so we can leave that blank. Now, right now, because we've assigned no effect to our ability, the ability will work, but it's not going to actually do anything. But because we saved it, we can set up our auto attack for now anyway, just in case we forget later. To set an ability as the player's default auto attack, Click on the character tab on the left side and then open the player templates plugin and then open up the human warrior entry. Right at the top, you should see a field labeled auto attack. All we have to do is set that to our unarmed strike ability and then that ability is going to be used anytime the player right clicks on something and they are unarmed. From here, normally we would also go and add the ability to the skill as well by navigating back to the skill plugin under the combat tab, then opening up our unarmed strength skill that we created in the previous video. We can press the add ability button and then select our unarmed strike ability to be automatically learned at level one. So a player who learns the unarmed strength skill will automatically also get the unarmed strike ability at level one. The reason we are not going to do that for this ability, unarmed strike, is because we are using it as an auto attack. It has no cooldown because we want it to use our player's attack speed as its cooldown. But if we also put the ability here, that means the player will be able to use the unarmed strike ability freely from their hotkey bar with no cooldown and spam it 50 times a second. So we will leave our unarmed strike ability out of the skill. And if you're wondering how to switch auto attack abilities being used based on the weapon equipped, you can assign a new auto attack ability to each of the weapons you create in the items plugin. So each weapon could be using a different auto attack ability once it's equipped. But we'll go over that more when we dive into the items plugin. For now, that's it for this ability plugin video. You should have a general grasp on how all of the parameters work in the ability plugin and our unarmed strike ability is almost ready to use. If you are a bit overwhelmed by how many options exist in this plugin, do not stress it. The ability plugin is by far one of the more complicated ones in Atavism and once we sort out how to use the next two plugins, the effects and coordinated effect plugins, we'll go through and make a variety of abilities using all of the plugins together. That's it for this video though, if you have any questions, be sure to drop by the Discord, the community and Atavism staff are all very helpful in troubleshooting any problems you have. 
I'll see you all in part 3 of the Atavism X combat tutorial series where we will be going over how to use the effects plugin and making a proper effect for our unarmed strike ability. Don't forget to subscribe to the Atavism YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to be alerted when new videos on Atavism are released. Have a great day and happy developing.